Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. It's time we're going to be in Felsic Inferno, watching Cybernetic Pony versus Cron Aberrant. So starting out, we see that Cron Aberrant going for CISO, and so is Cybernetic Pony. CISO Mirror, we have seen this a fair amount recently, actually. CISO Mirrors have been a bit more common than they used to be. It used to be all Greco Mirrors as it was in the last game, but CISO Mirrors are no longer a dead art. And neither player actually doing anything yet, they're just setting themselves up. Probably going to go for a more economic strategy. Felsic Inferno, I might as well go over the map since this hasn't come up too much. Yeah, Crown Ever going for a bit more of an economic strategy. Felsic Inferno is a fairly small map. Both players start out at the south side of the map and only have this little path to go across. So it's got a short rush distance. Has some resources in the center near this little lava lake. And quite a few in an island right in the middle. As well as quite a few just along the center. The center is very resource heavy. But, of course, quite vulnerable since it is the center, and both players have equal access to it, and it's open as well. There's no way to really defend it. There's also the north base, which is sort of the main expansion any player will go to at the mid-game. And right now, we see Cybernetic Pony is actually moving one of his marines up there right now, or moving them... No, he's scouting around, making sure that Cybernetic Pony isn't quickly moving there. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, is sending... Sorry. Cybernetic Pony is moving around to make sure that Cronabern isn't setting up any bases there. I was thinking for a second Cybernetic Pony would be setting up a base up here... But he is not. He is, however, moving his Acron in such a way that it will find any bases that are built there, as well as moving his Marine in such a way that he could build a base if he wanted to. And Crown on the other hand, going for a direct base to base move and a factory being built up very quickly for a Cybernetic Pony. This is not unusual, like I said. This is a small rush distance map. Crown Abbott going more for an economic strategy. He's got five LCRPs already at the one minute mark, or almost two minute mark. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, like I said, Factory, 3 RPs, and 1 Importer. So Cybernetic Pony going to be going for an ATHC rush, possibly Lancer rush. He's not too... He, he doesn't have anything against Lancer rushes. Most CISO players would go for an ATHC rush, but Cybernetic Pony has often been doing things in a slightly less orthodox way. So I expect Lancer rush to be just as likely as an ATHC rush from him. He's also building up some infantry, getting a Special Ops right off the bat. And... Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize to anyone who was watching live. I forgot to unmute my microphone in the live stream. Don't worry, the YouTube video is fine. Now, as I was saying, for those of you who didn't see it, with Felsic Inferno, like I said, resources in the center, resources in the north and south, or north, east, and players in the south. And we see Saturday Pony is going for a very quick build up, probably trying to get ATHCs. Waiting for this reserve to be done, though, because he used it to build a special officer, which may not have been the best idea. And Cybernetic Pony appears to be prepared to stop any expansions over to the north. This is a special ops, non marine, so it cannot actually build anything there. While Crown Abbott was going for much more direct scouting and sending some infantry in, or it looks like it was sending some infantry in to attack directly. And he is also building a couple importers, probably getting a factory right now, so he is playing a bit more to the mid game, where Cybernetic Pony looked like he was playing very much to the early game. And there's the first ATHC, another ATHC likely to be built soon, and an armory being built up as well. A s no, sorry, it's an importer, that's 5x5. Five five. An importer being built up, a second one. In a not bad spot, actually. Admittedly, he's not playing against Grekum, but this base construction will be very effective at fighting Grekum. If he was. And given that Crown usually plays Grekum, that's not a bad assumption. That was a nice setup. Regardless, Crown is playing CISO, but still losing the forces that he had set up. Mostly a scout, and those forces just there so that Crown Aberrant knows Cybernetic Pony is moving out, and what Cybernetic Pony is moving out with being an ATHC and some infantry. Another ATHC likely to come out soon, but Cybernetic Pony just now has the money for it, and just now building it. While Crown Aberrant going very heavily for importers, has Factory probably could use a second, but I'm guessing he's going to go for Factory Armory, have both of them build up at the same time. And Comp Center as well, just for extra vision. I don't know if he's going to keep that there, or if he's going to move it along. Because a comm center right at the front, while good, would probably be better if it was, say, around here. It would get more vision, and Cybernetic Pony probably would not see it on this plateau. Where Cybernetic Pony is not going at all for scouting, he is just going for direct assault to the center, probably from there, straight into Crown Aberrant's base. Crown Aberrant is pretty vulnerable right now. I mean, this is the only time Cybernetic Pony will have an advantage. Within the next two or three minutes, because it's just... Well, I mean, Crown Aberrant is clearly going to explode. He has gotten his factory, he has gotten another army, he's building some infantry, he's gotten so many importers, he is going to explode out, and Cybernetic Pony is not going to have the facilities to stop him. 
he doesn't have the resources or anything. It's completely hopeless if Cybernetic Pony does not attack right now, which he is doing. Because right now, Crown Aberrant is vulnerable. He should be able to push this back, but it would at least delay things. However, Cybernetic Pony is, even with this, my... No, he is not going for this directly. What is he doing? Why is he not going for this? I do not understand why he's not going for this direct assault. He's going for the expansion, assuming that Crown has expanded and he can just harass that out, but that is not going to be the way to go. The way to go is going to be directly attacking the base. So Crown Aberrant, Crown Aberrant probably has this game, though we'll see. It may turn around. This is still fairly early, and there's still a possibility that two players are fairly even right now. There's still a possibility for Cybernetic Pony to come back. He is not out of the game by any stretch. He's just at a slight disadvantage because he is not quite as economically well set up as Crown Aberrant is, mostly for the importers. Crown Aberrant has more importers and therefore can build units more quickly. He is not taking- is he taking advantage of this yet though? It doesn't appear to be. He seems to be focusing on getting one factory and one import- or one armory, but not focusing on both factories. And this actually have the res well, the resources other than reserves to do too much. He, it's more Liquid Crystal as being a bottleneck right now. He should be fine, though. ADHDs aren't especially expensive, and he still has got an advantage. He's got, like I said, production advantage by having two factories. As long as he has resources to support them, and Cybernetic Pony getting machinery, so Cybernetic Pony focused more on winning by tech than by sheer numbers. At this point, I'm not certain that would be the best way to go. Tornades would be not a bad choice. Tanks probably wouldn't be super effective against the numbers that Crown Aberrant's about to push out, and even Tornadas might be a bit tricky, but Tornadas have nice splash damage, so they would be able to deal some with the numbers at least. They'd have crowd control capabilities. However, Cybernetic Pony very quickly getting one of one of the factories, and this is happening about a minute later than where Crown Aberrant is. Crown Aberrant doesn't have to worry about Cybernetic Pony getting rid of that factory, because that factory is continuing to build up and will have more ATHCs by the time it's done. Still though, Crown Aberrant could be falling behind a bit. He's not careful. No, he's not. He's fine. He's getting machinery as well. Actually, he's getting machinery before Cybernetic Pony does. Ultimately beating him to that punch too. And moving his comm center in such a way that it will block off everything coming in. So Cybernetic Pony being distracted by that comm center and Crown Aberrant using that to push his ATHCs forward and dealing with all these troops very effectively. This is going to be no problem for Crown Aberrant to deal with. Hero thought he actually was getting on the back foot, but no, he's good. He's fine. These ATHCs are more than enough to deal with what's going on here. So, coming in at the 6 minute mark, this is from Crown point of view, so actually jumping back to the 549 mark, about a minute up from the unplayable past, and Crown Aberrant looks to be in good shape. Cybernetic Pony just hanging out in his expansion, and Cybernetic Pony, from his point of view, a minute later, he believes he's dealing damage. He's planning on moving forward and attacking, but it doesn't look like that's likely to happen. Crown Aberrant is able to get rid of his ATHCs, getting rid of all of his ATHCs very quickly. His inventory are also down. However, Crown Aberrant lost an ATHC in the process. Another one coming in for Cybernet Pony. And Cybernet Pony is losing yet another one. So Cybernet Pony losing his entire army coming in. He's streaming in units, streaming in more ATHCs. But he doesn't have the production capacity to be able to actually outpace Crown Aberrant. Really, Crown Aberrant... The only thing that might hold Crown Aberrant back is if he doesn't have enough liquid crystal Q plasma. And I think he does. Actually, Crown Aberrant getting the first Tornado, Not Cybernet Pony. So Crown Aberrant definitely ahead here. Cybernetic Pony getting a second factory finally, but he is still behind. He is getting Lancers of his own. Not a bad idea with the Tornads, but even then, the ATHCs that are being built up are going to be more than enough to deal with that. And Crown Aberrant at the six minute mark, having gotten rid of the ATHCs that Cybernetic Pony has sent, although Cybernetic Pony is continuing to stream them in, but he's gotten rid of most of them. Some more infantry coming in as well. And Crown Aberrant, while taking a lot of pressure, is still building up, getting his economy going as Tornad here will be able to deal with the rest of the ATHCs. The Lancer should be destroyed very quickly by the ATHCs. It's not a particularly effective anti-ground unit before Aerospace is upgraded. And Aerospace is not upgraded. We also see the Special Ops coming in down from the north. Cybernetic Pony is sending that down to help reinforce, but even with that, I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. Cybernetic Pony checking the Implayable Past Edge, and we see that the Implayable Past Edge that Cron Aberrant has won this battle. He has gotten rid of the ATHCs, and he is getting on top. So like I said, Cron Aberrant has exploded. The Lancer is coming in, and Cybernetic Pony believes... Oh, well, sorry. Cybernetic Pony further in the future had hit quite hard, but Crown Aberrant better prepared in this iteration and will be able to stop those Lancers coming in. The first Lancer coming in, the ATC should be able to deal with it without too much issue. No! Crown Aberrant's actually moving away! Nope, never mind. Not moving away fast enough. Cybernetic Pony losing that, ATHC, losing that Lancer to the ATHCs, though killing an ATHC in the process. Not bad. 
but a mech being built up, and that will be more than enough to defend against any number of Lancers that come in, especially being that they're streamed in, not coming in in a group. So Cybernetic Pony right now is definitely falling behind. However, he is actually able to deal quite a bit of damage to this Tornado. The Tornado, not unsupported, however, the ATHC finishing off the Lancer, but the Tornado taking quite a bit of damage in the process. So the Tornado will probably be going down fairly soon. They're down at the 837 mark. That Tornado is gone. Bit of a shame, those are fairly expensive. Cheaper since the last patch, but still fairly expensive. Cryonimer could build another one, and he actually might not need to. In fact, Cybernetic Pony might have changed his strategy a bit. He doesn't. He's still going for Lancers, but I think Cryonimer might have just jumped back a bit to before that Lancer came in and dealt the damage it dealt. It looks like Cryonimer getting a bit wise, avoiding the giant lava river and going straight around because he wants to make sure that he's not getting hit above there where the HTCs can't support. And the Tornado is still taking a lot of damage from the ATHCs. I mean, ATHCs are good anti-air units. They're generalist units, but they're still quite effective against air. And that's really where Crown Emerald should not be splitting his forces like that. A Tornado cannot deal with too many ATHCs on its own. I mean, clearly it can't deal with more than one on its own. And even then, it was a close fight. So at this point, this Lancer coming in, dealing with damage it can, getting rid of this comm center, and Crown Emerald trying to deal with it, but... He might be losing that comm center. It looks like he's going to be losing a marine. Though that's able to nearly kill the Lancer in the process. And this Tornado will be able to finish off the Lancer. But a second Lancer coming in. And the infantry to support it. Are, or support the destruction of the Lancer. Will be able to stop the ATHC. Sorry, the Tornado from me is right. He's saying ATHC. Because normally you just see ATHCs in CISO mirrors. I'm quite surprised, pleasantly, that there are ATHCs. Because... There are, oh, sorry, there aren't just ATHCs, because there usually are just ATHCs. They're often just ATHCs. But Lancers and Tornados are being used a lot, and that's nice to see. A little unusual, but that's not that unusual. It shouldn't be unusual. They aren't bad units. I'm a bit surprised, however, that neither player has gone to Martanks yet. Neither player getting a Macrofab, or... I mean, Crown has a mech, but neither player really going for Macrofabs. Crown actually getting two mechs right now, and I think he's just using that for support. For anti-air support. Sorry, one of them is being used to patrol his base, possibly to build a macrofab. The other one going down here... You know what? They might both be for macrofabs. Well, one... No, this one's for defense turrets. The macrofab's not being built yet, and Lancer's coming up for... Well, Lancer's up for Crown Aberrant. So both players going for the same idea. However, Crown Aberrant has the Tornads as well, so he's going to be much better against ground. And the ATHC able to get rid of the Lancer, but the Lancer not quite able to get rid of the Tornad, but the Tornad is way too weak to go into another battle if it fights anything. So they're not trying to go back to harass... Crown Aberrant keeping it to the back to make sure it doesn't actually get hit by anything. And dealing quite a bit of damage, harassing out these RPs and able to close two of the QP RPs. Cybernetic Pony right now has enough QP in reserve that it doesn't matter, but he will need that QP later on. Well, at the same time, we see that Cybernetic Pony is coming down from the north with his mech and marine. The marine able to get rid of the ATHC, and this ATHC on this iteration will not be able to save the Tornad. The Tornad is going to be going down to the Lancers, probably. We'll see, but I think the Lancer has an, the upper hand at this point. I don't think the Tornado has any way out of this. Neither player has actually expanded at this point, though. As we can see, Crown Aberrant is prepared to expand. He has... Sorry, he has expanded now. At the 12-minute mark, Crown Aberrant has expanded. It's two minutes ahead of where Cybernetic Pony is. And the mech building up what it can... I mean, sorry, mech has built up its defense turrets. That is good. Marines just building up what they can on top of that, and the Tornado coming back home after being damaged. There's no repairing this, though. I mean, there's special ops, but they can only repair infantry. There needs to be a Macrofab in order to get the Blackbirds or the MFBs in order to repair this Tornado here. Because at this point, that Tornado is completely ineffective. ATHCs are coming in, however. Crown Aberrant is rebuilding his forces, but he can't actually deal any meaningful damage. He had done some harassment, but even that actually has been completely undone. Really, there's no actual harassment going on anymore. So, that's about... Really, it. I mean, the Lancer. There's a Lancer coming from the north. Cybernetic Pony is continuing to put on the pressure. And at this point, Cron Aberrant can defend himself fairly well. He's got the units to do so, and not actually really. Sorry, in the present for the Observer. But Cron Aberrant at the 11 minute mark is not really too worried. He has the means to deal with any forces coming in at this point, any single unit that comes in to try to damage him. So there's not much for him to do at this point other than build up and get a Macrofab, probably. He doesn't have to worry about his defense too much, he just has to worry about how he's going to actually win. And Cybernetic Pony is somewhat in the same boat. He does have some tanks being built up. No ground units, he's not going for heavy tanks, he's going for straight tanks. Tanks are once again a generalist unit. I've 
not seen them used very much, and a lot of people have, or at least I've heard, argued recently that ATCs are the only units you should really be using for ground generalist units for CISO, just because tanks are expensive. We'll see how that pans out, however. Cybernetic Pony is definitely using those tanks. They are considerably tougher than the ATHCs, and they will... Well, anything will stop this Tornod. <laughs> a strong breeze will stop this Tornod right now. It's it's heavily damaged. And that strong breeze appears to be a Lancer. Actually, no, the Lancer is not coming in as much as quickly, but the tanks will be able to stop it. And stop it, they do. Down the Tornod goes, and there's really not much for... Well, okay, one of the tanks is clearly committed to attacking the air. Prepared to attack, and it set its target, and it wasn't going to let reality get in the way. Cryhammer also going for tanks, so both players are being very symmetric with their strategies. Neither player deviating too much. Although, we do see an importer being built up to the north, and likely we're going to see some RPs being built up to the northwest for Cybernetic Pony. And Cybernetic Pony just has jumped back a bit, double-checking what's going on. Sorry, Cryhammer's jumping back to see what's going on with the Tornad, seeing the tanks haven't come in. While Cybernetic Pony is... Also, he's at the Unplayable Past Edge, and at the Unplayable Past Edge, he's getting Gate Tech. So there's a difference. Crime Hammer is not going for Gate Tech. He's not even focused on that in terms of economy. He's still focused on building up units and focused on, I don't know what else. I'm getting his expansion. That's about it. He hasn't gotten any more tech. He hasn't gotten any macrofabs. He's still focused on factory level units with machinery and just getting an army from there. He needs to attack pretty much now, though. Cybernetic Pony is getting... She wanted to get Gate Tech. Well, he was getting Gate Tech. Probably fairly soon. It's probably within the next couple seconds. But it's hard to say. He doesn't have enough resources for it now, or very close to enough resources. He's going to be probably getting it as soon as he has the Q-Plasma for it. While Kron Abbott, on the other hand, is about half a minute up from there. If he attacks right now, when he is now... He should be able to deal some damage and actually stop the gate tech from being too powerful. The thing is with CISO, they actually take a lot more investment than, say, Grekum to get their gate tech going. They can't just get gate tech and start chronoporting. They have to get gate tech, then get a chronoporter, then wait for the chronoporter to recharge, and then they can chronoport. Or they can build a teleporter and just jump into the opponent's base and bypass all defenses. That's another option. I don't know if Cybernetic Pony's going to go for that. Probably going to go for chronoporters. Might go for both. Might get a teleporter, then a chronoporter, then have his units chronoport back and teleport in. That makes for an effective uppercut, but it's hard to say what he's going to do, because CISO doesn't often get gate tech. Usually with CISO, the game either ends beforehand, or if they do get gate tech, the last time I saw them get gate tech, it was a proxy chronoporter. I haven't seen them just get gate tech in a straight-up game without going for any sneakiness or any real expansions, actually. Cybernetic Pony's going for this one thing here. So I don't think Cybernetic Pony can really support this. He is, however, getting a Teleporter. So he's getting that first step of what I mentioned before about Teleporter and Chronoporter to use an effective uppercut. He is getting a lot of units to support this as well, so I'm I'm still going with the idea that he's probably going to go for an uppercut Teleport attack. While Chron Aberrant is not at all focused on any real tech. This is actually rather surprising. He is getting himself gate tech, so both players are going for the gate tech, and Cryonabert has found the expansion in the northwest. He's aware of where Cybernetic Pony has been hiding an importer. Really, the main base is the target of interest right now. And no chronoporter being built up yet. No! No chronoporter is being built up at all! Only teleport is being used. Teleporting right into the back of the base to try to snipe out this Akron near the unplayable past edge. I don't think... No, actually, I think he might be able to pull it off. Yes, he is actually able to deal enough damage to get rid of that Akron. It's possible that he's not going to commit to it, or he might get defended out of this. Kron Aberrant is going to be moving back in the Impelable Past Edge. He's moving all of his forces in to prepare for this, I think. No, he's committed to his own attack. He's not moved back at all. These units teleporting in at the 1616 mark will not find the Akron. That is the difference. There we go. The Akron has been moved out of the base, but Kron Aberrant still taking a lot of damage in his main base. The defense turrets are doing what they can, and actually what they can is quite a lot. But even then, only getting rid of one of the ATHCs, this tank's still staying alive, or maybe not. It looks like it, it will go down. So one of the tanks going down, one of the ATHCs going down, while at the same time this Northwest base getting heavily attacked, and Cybernetic Pony... Did he just lose his Akron? I think Cybernetic Pony just lost his Akron. I think he has to move back. Yes, he has to move back, because Cron Aberrant is trying to snipe his Akron, but won't be able to do so, or 
maybe will. These Lancers look like they're not quite attacking fast enough, or not quite moving fast enough to deal with this, but Cron Aberrant definitely got the right idea, and Cron Aberrant's Akron has successfully escaped. Cron Aberrant needs to intercept this Akron. He has more Lancers coming in. They're coming in from a great position to intercept, but they are not doing that. They're focused more on just sticking with their hierarchy, and it's kind of unfortunate Cron Aberrant didn't seem to notice that the Akron had been moving away. However, there are no healing units. There's nothing for healing, but this Akron is in a great position right now. This teleporter can send it anywhere on the map, or almost anywhere on the map, which means it can leave. If Cryonabrant comes into attack, unless he's right at the Implova Past Edge, and possibly even then... Oh, never mind! What am I saying? The Akron's already been teleported. Cybernet pointed to that in advance, got it out of the base, and got it to the other expansion. Cryonabrant has no idea where it is, going just instead for the main base directly, and this is probably the best option, in all honesty. Just going for main base assault. I think... With these Lancers, he should be able to get rid of the Tornads. There aren't a lot of anti-air units having been built up. Crown Aberrant's base is going to survive long enough, and while it's unfortunate to lose the RPs, he doesn't have all of his RPs in his main base. So he still has some room to build up and to keep going. Crown Aberrant is unique in this regard, however. Cybernetic Pony has everything, has all of his eggs in one basket, and that basket is about to be smashed to pieces, or at least Crown Aberrant would hope. Unfortunately, Crown Aberrant is sending his Akron with his forces. Actually, maybe not unfortunately. It's probably the wisest place to put it, really. While a clever snipe could come around in the back and deal with it, that Akron is probably safest with the defense forces. And the Lancers, two of them going down. The HAC is able to get rid of them, unfortunately being at the front and not able to get rid of the Tornade before they go down, but still able to provide enough support to get that Tornade destroyed. At this point, Cybernetic Pony, I think, has lost this. He does have a lot of tanks still, and his, a his Lancer... Sorry, his ATTs are getting rid of the Lancer. Crown Aberrant losing his Lancer. Cybernetic Pony will be still at a disadvantage. He has lost most everything. He doesn't have any of the units in his main base for defense. Actually, the units that were attacking have been destroyed by defense forces being built at a factory. He got rid of quite a few of the RPs, but I think at this point he's about to lose the game. Or not. Maybe Crown Aberrant has retreated. Yeah, it looks like Crown Aberrant has in fact retreated from that assault. Because from Crown Aberrant's point of view, he's not attacking. Why, why is he not attacking yet? As you can see from Cybernetic Pony's point of view, that attack would have pretty much won the game. Or very close to. But no, Cybernetic Pony has not been attacked ultimately. Crown Aberrant has stayed back and is appearing to be continuing to build up forces, I guess just relying on having had more money in reserve, but... Cybernetic Pony still has a stronger economy right now. I mean, Crown Aberrant didn't lose everything, but he still lost a lot. Still, Cybernetic Pony is... No, he's pretty committed to building up military forces. I, I'm i not sure what exactly is being planned here by Cron Aberrant. I think Cron Aberrant is going to be... I don't know. I think that it's... Oh, okay. Cron Aberrant actually in the chat is basically saying that he let the Akron go rather than trying to intercept it. I'm not sure I believe that. I mean, he might have just because, because he figured it wasn't going to be fun enough if he just let the game end like that. But that's kind of the point of Assassin Mode. If you're going to play Assassin Mode, that's that comes with the territory. That The whole point is that you can end the game suddenly with a really clever move like that. That's part of the appeal, really. But no matter. The game continues on, and Cybernetic Pony continues to build up very slowly, while Crown Armor continues to build up a bit more quickly, but both players trying to build up their armies as best they can. And now, what... Crown Aberrant really should do is move a Marine over to one of the expansions in the center and just start building RPs there. He has so much money for it. He is, however, going for another attack, seeing if he can break down Cybernetic Pony's base, and he can. He most certainly can. He's just got a sheer numerical advantage, regardless of unit type. He has a numerical advantage, and the unit types are pretty much identical. So, Cybernetic Pony building up a couple Tornads, which will be somewhat useful, but even then, the tanks are good anti-air units. Not the most cost-effective, necessarily, but still good. And the Tornado going actually to the north? Okay, that would have been a bad idea, because the teleporter would have allowed for that to be destroyed. Once the teleporter is gone, however, then Crown Aberrant should go and start expanding around the map, because he can. He really just can. Send a Marine around and just start plopping down RPs everywhere. Though I think at this point he's pretty much just won by sheer virtue of forces. But Cybernetic Pony can continue to rebuild up, or build up Tornados to defend, losing another importer, and I think... Oh, Cybernetic Pony does not believe he can win this, and is throwing in the towel. Still rather interesting. I... I mean, like I said, Cybernetic Pony did a good job with the harassment. Nice use of the teleporter. 
really did a lot of damage. It's just Crime Hammer had already expanded, and this expansion isn't going to be going down quickly. I'm a bit surprised the Cybernetic Pony did not himself expand, especially since he had the teleporter later on to support that. Regardless, that is the game, and Crown Abbott has won. So I hope you enjoyed that, and that will be it for tonight. So have a good night, everybody.